Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. Hope you guys have been enjoying the content on the channel as of late. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, uh, the summer season is officially on, so, you know, got a lot of films coming out. Uh, and, of course, for the channel, that means a lot of uh, reviews coming out pretty soon. Um, before we, you know, have the, the channel, you know, just swept with, like, you know, reviews and stuff like that, I just kind of wanted to touch on uh, something real quick, um, which is in regards to box office. Now, um, I don't usually talk about the box office on this channel too much, just because I don't really find it to be that noteworthy, but this year especially, I have been noticing, and I, I'm looking at my screen right here because I have all of my notes placed, I've been noticing a fairly big dip in overall box office take, especially when it comes to mainstream culture. Um, we've kind of touched on some of these films in the past, but I just want to now get a little bit more specific in terms of numbers and kind of addressing why this year's box office has been fairly weak, um, very weak, I would say, especially when you consider all the films that we're going to be talking about here. Um, so uh, we'll just start off. So excuse me if you notice the scene, my eyes over here, it's just, just so I can, uh, you know, talk to you guys and read for a second. Um, we're going to first talk about The Little Mermaid for, for, uh, for a second here. Now, we actually had talked about The Little Mermaid before on this channel, um, in, you know, in terms of some of the, uh, some of my fears of what The Little Mermaid was going to be. Thankfully, I've heard that stuff is not in the film, and of course, all the people who want to have diversity and all that kind of other nonsense, you know, come out of the woodworks and say, we need to address these things, it's very important. So I'm glad that the film didn't do that, which I thought it would, but it didn't, thankfully. Um, what it didn't do, however, though, is not make a ton of money. Uh, so far, it's made $217.5 million dollars. Um, against its budget, which is two, $250 million. Um, so not the strongest start in the world. Um, and also you have to take into account the marketing for the film as well, which is added $140 million apparently, uh, which is crazy. I, cause I don't remember seeing the film promoted that much, but I'm not really, you know, I'm not, I don't really pay attention to that sort of stuff. So maybe it, it was promoted super well, but I don't know. Um, and according to uh, the deadline, it needs to make at least five hundred and sixty million to break even. And with the summer literally on the horizon, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't see this film doing, uh, making its money back. So, um, so yeah, uh, but that's a big, you know, it's kind of a maybe scenario. But I'm leaning more towards that. That is probably, you know, the case. So. But there are four other films, four big films that we we're going to discuss here that have pretty much done their run and, you know, address, again, the reasonings behind why they basically just bombed. So um, the first one that I'm going to address is Shazam 2, uh, Shazam Fury of the, Go Fury of the Gods. Um, it had a budget of about 120 million. And its box office take was 133. So that's that's a bomb. Um, and I, I think it, again, illustrates more to the points that I've brought up before, which is that um, I think people are just getting tired of comic book films and they're just, they're becoming a lot more specific on what kind of films in this genre they're interested in. Just certain characters maybe are just becoming more enticing and other than others and you know it's i think it's more just a overall fatigue with with the genre people don't want to admit to such a thing but i just believe that that's what's happening because uh, the first is the um, people seem to really enjoy it this one i heard was yeah um but still people will go see a film regardless of quality we've talked about this before where it's not about the quality of such film it's more about what is the literal visual uh, thing being brought to the table, which is why Fast X is making all making a good amount of money right now. It's not about 
the fact that it's the 10th Fast and Furious movie. It's because, oh look, big car, explosions, car somehow jumps, gets, goes down from plane, hits road, takes down two jets. It's like, you know, it's all mayhem and it's bullshit, really. But I mean, you know, it's, it's entertaining and that's visually interesting to audience members. So that's why Fast and Furious is making all the money. Um, and for Shazam 2, as far as I'm concerned, it's just dull. For another, Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantum Medium, also was kind of sort of a bomb. Uh, it had a budget of around $200 million and it made a, had a box office take of $476 million. Now, this, like I said, this isn't really much of a bomb as it is kind of a minor uh, setback. I mean, it was, when you compare it to like the, the, the trend of what the MCU makes, I mean, like Guardians 3. I think made almost what 700 800 so far so it's again more to my point where i believe it's just now people becoming more selective to what they want to watch within this genre and thus within that developing a fatigue for the genre in general um because for an mcu film that is that that's why i label it a semi-bomb because for an MCU film, it should have done a lot better. I know people will make the argument that it's an Ant-Man film. Um, if I'm not mistaken, the second film did a lot better than this one did in terms of finance. Um, and also, for what this film was billing, yeah, it should have done a lot better. So, um, And I th again, I think it's just because it's, it's really just, you know, people just becoming tired of it, so... Uh, and be being just much more, um, much more selective of what they really want to watch in the series at this point. And then for the big ones, the big bombs that happened, um, the first one being uh, Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, now this one I actually heard was a decent film. I didn't see it. I was kind of curious to see it, um, but I don't know. Just in general, just didn't really really speak to me that much um and it had a had a, a box office take of 150 around 150 million but it had a budget of around 208.2 million so yeah that's a bomb um and i don't think that <clears throat> a film like touch and touch and dragons was destined to make a lot of money anyway uh, just because that's such a select few who actually give a shit about Dungeons and Dragons and also really care about medieval type uh type stuff I mean I haven't played Dungeons and Dragons so I don't fucking I don't know if it's medieval shit or whatever but um but, but yeah I, I didn't expect that to do that that well um but I heard it was decent I heard it was a decent film so but the outs from what, from what I've seen so far, the biggest bomb of the year so far is uh, Rainfield. Um, Rainfield had a box office take of, it was the Dracula film that came out, that, which just looked pretty, pretty, yeah, to me. Had a box office take of 25.3 million with a budget of 65 million. Yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty, that's pretty bad. Um, and it's, and it's kind of unfortunate really because Rainfield, I think, you know, with a budget that small, 65 million, and with someone like with Nicolas Cage at the front, I would think it would maybe, maybe get a little bit more money, but I guess not. Um, but the point of bringing up all of these films here, Little Mermaid, Shazam, Ant-Man, Dungeons and Dragons, Rainfield, these are all notable films. Like, these aren't, you know, indie films or, oh, we've heard a few things here or there about these sort. I mean, Rainfield probably is the exception because Rainfield was kind of a, you know, so-so, you know, kind of, kind of, you know, in terms of, like, overall interest. But I remember people being interested a lot about Dungeons & Dragons. I know people were interested in those two comic book movies, and I know people would want to see Little Mermaid. Um... It just illustrates more to what I've said previously, where I think people are just, they respond more to a vis to visuals than they do actual story. 
which is why Super Mario Brothers has made all the money this year, and films like these are not doing as well as they probably should have, because they don't look as interesting, or they're acting very similar to each other, or they just, they're doing things that people have already seen before. Again, fatigue that's being formed within genres and stuff like that. Um, and I'm not sure how this will spill over to the summer. I think, you know, I think it will honestly be kind of the 50-50 of the summer. I think that there will be some films that do well. I've heard The Flash, which, you know, that film's being promoted to, you know, to, to, to the peak. And we'll talk about The Flash actually in a few days here. Um, because I have my, uh, some, some choice words to say about The Flash, um, specifically, uh, The Flash himself, but, um, but, like, like, I'm not sure how other films will, are going to do, like, I don't know how Transformers is going to do, I don't know how, uh, uh, oh, God, what else is coming out this summer? Um, Oppenheimer, like, I'm not, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if audiences are going to be, um, I'm pretty sure Spider-Man is going to do well. Um, but again, it seems like audiences are just becoming much, much more selective of what kinds of films and stories they're interested in. Um, and, and within all that, like I said, it's a growing fatigue that I feel like it's just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, like, I'm not even sure if that Mission Impossible film is going to do all that great, to be honest. Um, so, you know, so, and these five films are just, are, are examples of how, you know, people are just becoming, I think, a little bit tired of, you know, certain formats and certain presentations and just overall stories. You know, like, maybe Disney's probably going to have to rethink their remake strategy, you know, of, like, making every, remaking everything they have, you know. Um... Who knows? Um, but yeah, I, I just, I think that this year has kind of demonstrated quite a bit about how audiences are feeling at the, at the theater nowadays. I think audiences are just kind of like, cause some of the better, like, I, because let me also bring this up because this is something uh, that we've also addressed in previous videos where audiences are gravitating more towards other things than, you know, like, like I said, visuals and stuff like that, that's one thing that most, that mostly attracts audience members, but the rising genre, the genre that, that people will be gravitating to the most in the future is horror, and I have proof for that with two films, and I'm just going to look them up very quickly here, um, because when you look at their box office, it's, it's telling as to, you know, how, you know, how, uh, wh where the, uh, the ad interest is going. Like, first one I'll mention, Megan, which I didn't see it. They said just looked like, you know, Chucky, but, um, Megan had a budget of 12 million, went on to make $176 million. That is a very, very good, uh, box office take. Like, very, very good. And then we go over to Scream 6, right? Yeah, Scream 6. Scream 6 had a budget of 33 million and it made 168 million. So, you know, th that to me is telling. That tells me that audiences, because, yeah, I'm also looking at like the domestic grosses here too. Like, like, like when we compare those budgets, Megan's, which domestic gross, 95 million. That's pretty strong. For Scream, it was 108 million. Um, but then you look at, the other films, the bigger films that are come that have come out with the hefty budgets, like Little Mermaid, its domestic gross was one thirty eight. With Guardians of the Galaxy, it was three ten, three ten at the start. Thankfully, it's made more money because, well, it's the third of that film. People have more of an interest in Guardians than anything else nowadays. Um, but you look at Ant Man and the Wasp two fourteen, um, like. You know, and it, like Fast X even, like Fast X, even though it is making generally a, a good amount of money, domestically speaking, it was 117, you know? So it's, it is, it's telling, you know, this year, uh, domestically and generally in the box office that people are just kind of, not kind of, 
are becoming very selective as to what they want to watch, you know? Like, Mario has been making all the money. I mean, yeah, domestically, yeah, $560 million. I mean, yeah, that's, again, it, it just goes back to what I said before about audiences watching something more for what how it looks than, than for what it's about. So, yeah, because I think Guardians is also fairly, yeah, Guardians is, I, mean, I think, is fairly colorful, but also has you know, uh, attractive elements, like it's the third of its, of its, of its, of its series. It's, you know, it has, uh, more, uh, characters that people actually gravitate to a lot in the, in this series, you know, um, you know, it's, it's, it's very, very interesting, you know, just looking at the numbers for this year, you know, and I am curious to see how the summer will be, you know, how, how other films will will perform, um, yeah, and I, I think it's gonna be kind of a spotty summer, to, in in my opinion. I I just I, I don't think it's gonna be that strong, um, but that remains to be seen. So, um, yeah, I'm just seeing if there's anything else that I can really that I can really bring up. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's just, it's, it's very telling by, you know, I mean, not to say that we've had, like, you know, like, Guardians is doing great, Mario is doing great, Fast is doing great, John Wick did good, yeah, John Wick did good, yeah, John Wick did pretty good, um, Creed 3 did, did, did fairly well, so, it's not to say that, you know, that there isn't any films that are not making any money. It's to say that it's being, it's more revealing, I, I think, this year that people are just be starting to, you know, kind of vote with their wallet, you know, kind of, you know, making more of a statement with, in terms of what kinds of films that they want to see, what kinds of people they want to see, and more or less just visually, because I'm telling you, all these films that I mentioned, Little Mermaid, Shazam, Ant-Man, Dungeons, Rainfield, all those films visually look really, really dull. Like, I, I've heard issues about Little Mermaid visually, so, um, so, and that's, that, that might be a big point of why people weren't, didn't show up to see these movies, and why Mario and other films are doing a lot better, so, um, <clears throat> but, but that's my observation. You guys let me know your observations on the box office this year. Do you guys think it's been not that great, or do you guys think it's been doing pretty well? And judge it, judge it fairly. You know, don't do the oh because of the pandemic. No, like you know, judge it for you know, you know how it actually is. And I think for how it is right now, not not that great. But um, you know, there are some good. There are some outliers to it, but. As I've presented, there are many examples where it seems that things are kind of so-so, kind of spotty. So I think summer will probably be more telling, if I'm being honest. So, um, But that's my thoughts on that. But you guys know your thoughts in the comment section below. And that's going to be it for me, guys. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, I will be having a couple of reviews coming down the pipe. Uh, so hopefully you guys will enjoy those videos and you know summer season's on so we'll have some movie reviews coming out uh pretty soon here so and if there's any uh any films in general that you guys might be you know like just old or new like anything that you guys would be curious for me to talk about um let me know because i would love to watch you know just something in general uh, but if it is interesting to me so but, but yeah, that's it for this video, guys. Thank you guys for watching, and I will catch you guys in the next video. Hope you guys have an awesome start to your summer, and uh, yeah. So, all right. I feel like I've uh, rambled on enough, so I am going to officially leave now. So, thank you guys for watching. I'll catch you guys next time. Bye.